Well, it finally happened. That thing I've been dreading, I knew it could happen someday, but never really expected it. This morning I woke up and there was no coffee. Fortunately, a new coffee shop just opened up about a mile from my house. So I'm using it as an opportunity to go down there with my oldest for a breakfast and coffee date. Oh, the, the coffee shop's next to the bike shop? I, I totally didn't realize that. That's such a crazy coincidence. All right, coffee crisis averted. Let's talk about training. This is a recovery week for me, so I thought it'd be a good opportunity to give an update. And because I think my approach is a little unorthodox, I thought I'd explain what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, and how it's working out. If you've been following my progress, you'll know that I spent the past few years training with a coach. But with my new job, my schedule's been really unpredictable, so I've had to be a lot more flexible in my training. To that end, I'm on a trainer road low volume plan, but I still ride 15 to 20 plus hours per week. I'll get to how exactly that works in a bit, but the gist is that on the low volume plans, they prescribe three days of intervals. I can work from home sometimes, so I try to do my more complicated intervals or intervals that require very specific stretches of road on days that I don't have to commute. So typically that looks like two weekdays of intervals and the third set either on Saturday or Sunday. On the low volume plan, they generally prescribe workouts that are between one and one and a half hours. And I try to ride between two to three hours per day. On days where I'm commuting, that's just an hour and a half in and an hour and a half home, all at endurance pace. On interval days though, it really depends on my schedule. On days when I have early meetings, I get up and do an hour of intervals on the trainer before they start and then try to get some endurance riding in later. Or sometimes I have two hours in the morning and I can go do my intervals outside. Other days, like today, I've got to do all my riding after work. Which on interval days has taken some getting used to. I sometimes have little patience for suffering on the bike after a long day at work. Today though is just endurance. So all I've got to deal with is post-work traffic, which probably for the same reason that I don't like doing intervals after work, Go! I found is often worse than pre-work traffic. In my experience, drivers before work make bad decisions. Drivers after work make terrible ones. Fortunately, most of the rest of this loop should be relatively low traffic. One of the features that I use all the time with Trainer Road is workout alternates. By default on my plan, like I said, the workouts are between one and one and a half hours. Most of them are one hour. But if I've got more than that, I would go to the workout alternates and select something that's say 90 minutes. That's the same relative difficulty level and the same type of workout. So of course, if I'm doing VO2 max workouts, I'm going to stay in VO2 max, stay in the same energy system. But more than that, if I've got 30 30s, I'm gonna to try to stay with a 30 30 workout rather than doing a three or five minute VO2 max repeat. And the trainer road workout alternate system gives you that flexibility. I try to do bigger rides on the weekends when I can. So that might look like a long endurance ride, or it might look like intervals that are longer in nature, like threshold or sweet spot. One of the things that I've really loved about this approach is that three workouts per week that are each about an hour doesn't seem nearly as daunting as five or six workouts a week that are all two hours. And yeah, while I still ride just as much or more, it's that mental aspect of, oh, I can do three one hour workouts per week. It's just easier to handle mentally. And if you've ever done training, especially on the trainer, you'll know that the mental battle is at least half of it, sometimes a lot more. And if after all of that, I've still got more time and I really want to spend it on the bike, it's a good opportunity to get my kids on the trail. There's no training benefit for me, but like I've always said, I'm a husband and a dad first before I'm anything else on a bike. But if I can be a husband or a dad on the bike, that's winning. As for how it's been working out, it's hard to say. Objectively, my critical power numbers have been increasing, but that doesn't necessarily mean much. The real test is what happens during races. I haven't been doing much of that this year, but anecdotally, what I can say is the early season races that I did do, I was summarily dropped. And that hasn't been happening lately. In fact, I've been there at the end for the last two races that I've done. So I think it's going pretty well. I wanna hear from you. How do you fit training into your schedule? What tips and tricks do you have that you wanna share? Drop me a comment down below. And if you're going to train or ride for that matter outside, please do so safely. And on that topic, why don't you click right here for a video on how to do that. But that's all for now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.